Hey everybody, on this week's episode, I'm going to give you a preview of Disney Pixar's new movie, Luca, premiering on Disney Plus June 18th. And I'm going to tell you all about my favorite breakfast place at Walt Disney World, The Wave at the Contemporary Resort. All that and more on this week's show. Hello out there, podcast family. Welcome to this week's show. My name is Chris. And I'm Kelly. Excuse <laughs> Did me? You forget your name there for a second. Well, I had a frog <laughs> in my throat and I didn't know what was about to happen. Just like Grogu. Yeah. Just. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so he doesn't talk, so. Uh, and Does I don't, make little I don't actually eat frogs. Mm. So, so maybe y'all are not. It's not, maybe not just like Grogu. Maybe not just like Grogu. Uh, I'm digging your ears. These are my chewy ears, and I would swear that I've worn these before. These are more your traditional ear. Yeah. Um, and I'm using the chin strap and everything. I see that. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I would say they're not quite large enough to actually sit on my head, so they're sort of on top of my head, and the headphones are holding them on. And so from a park logistics perspective – you couldn't wear these around the park. Yeah, I think that, or you couldn't wear them around the park. You think they're for kids? Maybe. I mean, they make I adult versions would, of the traditional. I, it year. makes me. It makes the top of my head sweat just looking at. <laughs> oh, they're not hot. No, actually, surprisingly, with my glasses and the headphones, these are some of the most comfortable ears I've worn for podcasting. Okay, well, they they look awesome. Well, this is my last set of ears. For the contest. Which, by the way... Ends on Tuesday. Ends on... Monday. Monday night at midnight. Ends on Monday night at midnight. Um, so this is my last set of Star Wars ears that I said I was going to wear. It's not my last set of Star Wars ears. It's, you know, I said I was going to wear ears I'd never worn mm-hmm. before for the podcast. So this is my last set because it's our last week. Yeah. Um, so enter, 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 yes. enter. Get into the contest because... It's going to be over soon. This stuff goes out, what, next week? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So We are still in pack, packing boxes, y'all, and I'm trying to get things out of this house. Yes. <laughs> so this one's going out. That's right. <laughs> um, so this week we saw downloads in some awesome places. Okay. Uh, shout out to our new hometown of Lincoln, Nebraska. <gasps> We had downloads from Lincoln. We had, in fact, we had more downloads from Lincoln than any other town. Oh, gosh. I hope that's our neighbors. I hope we that's our neighbors. The we that told would be them. So cool. my, the guy that I'm seeing from my, the foot doctor that I'm seeing. You told my, him? Yeah, I told him. Awesome. And, uh, and he said he told some folks. So Lincoln, Nebraska is leading the way this weekend. Just. Makes us feel super welcome. That's awesome. Well, let me just say, y'all, we've got stickers. And if this is your first time listening, we've got stickers for y'all. You know, just if you're the neighbors, then just pop right over and I'll give you a sticker. Maybe you should carry some to your foot doctor. I should, for sure. Yes. Uh, We also saw downloads from Shenandoah, Louisiana, which is just, it's actually part of Baton Rouge uh, Metroplex there, but it's just east of Baton Rouge. Shaw, Washington. Shaw, like Which Shaw is Air Force Base. Spelled that way, yeah. <laughs> this is like literally a little tiny island. It's part of the San Juan Islands between in the sound between Seattle and the Canadian border. Wow, Which okay. was a, it's really interesting okay. location. That's a fun place. It is. It did look like a fun place. Um, and then, here we go. I apologize to the people that live in this town. Hyderabad, India. I think you killed it, honey. I, th- I think so, too. <laughs> um, this is this is an hour and a half flight east of Mumbai, so it's right in okay. the middle of of India. Fun. So, I wonder how they found us. Is that why you had the chicken satay for dinner tonight? It is. Uh, it's not, but <laughs> that's you know, it's a happy accident. <laughs> that's cool. Very cool. So, and by the way, we are on pace for another record download month. So, thank you. We for we that. will we will absolutely break it. It's, there's no question. We'll break the download record again this month. I can't even it's, believe it's um, humbling, honestly. It really and we're coming up on season four. We're coming up on a year. We are a year on J- June nineteenth. We will have some special announcements then. Yep. Um, and season four starts right. next month, That's which right. is crazy. Some new things in the works for that. Mm-hmm. So okay, so ready for some Main Street? Main Street. All right. So, this week, Disney CEO Bob Chapek suggested that the park reservation system and the virtual queues are likely going to be around for a while. Yeah, in four months. The virtual queues in particular wear people out. I I can kind of get that. 
Um, the park reservation system, people are not super happy about all the time, but that's just on the socials. From a business perspective, oh, I totally gosh. get both. It totally helps them crowd manage. Why do people not like the virtual queues? Because they, they feel like they can't get in. Oh, I am so for the virtual queues. <laughs> I know. you. The redu- reduction of crowds is always... Reduction of crowds and not standing in line is always something I'm for. Bob, yep. do not get rid of the virtual even, queues. Even if we have to wait to like a certain time of day, yeah. I'm for it. I saw that they're going to use virtual queues when Web Slinger opens. Yep. And I was like, praise God. Yes. I know. I know. Yep. That's fantastic. I, I like it too. It, I love it, the virtual queues. Anything that helps them plan is going to ultimately make our lives better in the parks, I it's think. Gonna, it's, yeah, they're going to be able to manage crowds better. And so, in essence, it makes our lives better. That's what I think. I, I'm for it. So, a new commercial was released on Thursday, hyping the 50th anniversary mm-hmm. celebration at, at Walt Disney World. Go to uh, the the Disney Parks YouTube channel. You can check out that that commercial. It's really, really good. It's... um. The, the idea is there's a special drawer and a special room inside of Cinderella's castle that holds all the 50th anniversary magic, and it explodes out and oh, covers all cute. the parks. Yeah, it's really That's cool. Precious. Um, in the entertainment world, as of the time of this recording, Cruella has just released. Yes, and we haven't seen it yet. We haven't, but we're going to tonight, right? We're going to watch it tonight. Before so that. by the time this releases, we will have seen it, mm-hmm. and we would love to hear what you all think about Cruella. Yes, I read a review from Variety today. They loved it, mm-hmm. and I'm super excited to watch it. Yes. Um, another interesting thing: Disney Plus in July will release a series based on the Turner and Hooch movie. Oh gosh! Yeah. Turner and Hooch was a touchstone picture, which was on by Disney. Loved Turner and Hooch. I, I, it was right in your wheelhouse, man. Loved Turner and Hooch. Is yeah. Tom Hanks going to be in it? No. Um, Scott Turner was the character Tom Hanks played. Scott mm-hmm. Turner Jr. is the character in this one. Oh, okay. And so, he so plays, it's not going to be like Turner and Hooch thirty years later. No, it's not. This is okay. this is, uh, but it's very Turner and Hooch esque. Okay. Right? So okay, should be should be. That would fun. be that sounds fun. Should yeah, I'm for that. Um, so Disney, along with the rest of Broadway, is coming back to Broadway. <sighs> so excited about I that. I know. Lion King will kick off on September the fourteenth at the Minskoff Theater. Mm-hmm. September fourteenth, my impression is the is like maybe the official or unofficial launching of all of the Great White Way, Broadway. Okay. Right? Uh Hamilton, Lion King, we could all launch that weekend. Okay. Um, September 14th is my brother's birthday, so not that he should take credit for that, but, (laughs) um, Aladdin is launching on September 28th, two weeks later at the New Amsterdam Theater. We've seen so much at New Amsterdam. We have. We saw, I think we saw, uh, we saw Mary Poppins for sure there. We saw Mary Poppins there for sure. I loved it so much. Yeah. So to encourage people to, to buy in and go, Disney's doing some really cool stuff. Um, they're going to pay 100% of your Ticketmaster fees up through August the 7th of next year, 2022. Wow. And you can cancel or exchange tickets with no surcharge right up to the date of the show. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Also, through July 1st of this year, you can purchase both the Aladdin and Lion King show for 150 bucks. Great deal. Yep. For that. Honey, so when are we flying to New York? <laughs> Just don't tease me. <laughs> 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 um so exciting news for us disneyland is welcoming out of state visitors starting june the 15th and we're booked we are booked we are booked <laughs> we've got our tickets we've got our uh park reservations so excited we are very excited yes uh, i've never been to disneyland so and i've never been to california adventure so, right. So, so we're going to do both. We are. Um, and honestly, the trip that I went to Disneyland was very, very budget trip. Yeah. So um, I enjoyed it because I was there with girlfriends, but mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm excited to do it with you. Yeah, that's going to be great. Um, they also, uh, Disneyland hours are set to increase on July the 1st. Sweet. Yep. Uh, and the Jungle Cruise is going to open up. The new reimagined Jungle Cruise will open up there on July the 16th. I saw that they delivered Trader Sam's hut this week. They did, to the one at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> I know. Trader Sam's gift shop, which is actually the lost and found <laughs> for the Jungle Cruise, which so is really good. 
<laughs> um, cast member previews have begun for Avengers Campus at California Adventure. Fun. Yep, that's set to open to the public next Friday. June 4th. Yeah, June yes. 4th. Um, like you said, web, sling- web slingers will be on the virtual queue system, mainly to limit guests to one ride per visit. Do you get that? All right, but also, hello, Again, that's we gonna, don't have to stand in line. Right, that's going to benefit all of us. I'm so for it. They also released a uh, guide map for Avengers Campus, and I, I pulled down an image okay. of that. We'll try to put that out there. Fun. So, it was good. Lots of uh, returning to normalcy at the Magic Kingdom, by the way. Um, uh, physical distancing markers have been removed from the monorail system. Wow. They've been removed from the ferry boats. The ferry boats have already increased capacity. Because they really pack them in on that monorail. They do. Well, they're about expect that they will increase capacity on the monorail soon. Um, I hope they leave the dividers up. Uh, that would be nice, actually. Between the, the benches, so that when you're sitting, like, your hair is not touching the hair of the person. <laughs> These things you think about. The things that I think about. People don't know. People don't know. You're going to hate this. Skyliner is uh, now allowing separate I parties. I that. You know? I do hate that. Yeah. Because, literally, we've never been on Skyliner when we had to sit with somebody. I know. <laughs> and I am a little bit worried that that's going to make me not like it as much. There's still a nice breeze, but with the breeze, like, if... You know, somebody's all stinky or what have you. I still have to smell it. The things I worry about, people don't know. (laughs) Slinky Dog, Muppet Vision, Toy Story Mania um, have all removed their physical distancing markers. And all relaxation stations at Hollywood Studios are now gone. Wow. We're just stepping right back in. Man, I mean, we are ripping the Band-Aid off, Stepping right back in. (laughs) Work has begun on the Theater of the Stars at Hollywood Studios. That's where Beauty and the Beast is. Okay. Probably just um, maintenance work, getting things back to ship shape there. Okay. Um, Walt Disney World is hiring full-time food and beverage cast members. Nice. So uh, starting pay is $14 an hour. Fantastic. It's good. It's not 15 but Could be it's, better. Right. It's better At least it's not seven. an average. It's, better it's, than seven and a quarter. It's, it's not an average. It's That's starting pay. So right. average pay is probably higher. Um, it also means that they've actually offered those positions to people who were laid off previously. And so those people have either come back or, um, they've found other gainful employment, which would be great. Right. You're going to love this. Okay. Not exactly sure when it's going to launch, but to celebrate the Ratatouille adventure, Remy's Ratatouille adventure, Mm -hmm. at some point in time, Epcot's likely to release a Remy uh, shoulder buddy. Oh, how cute. That crawls around no. on your shirt. <laughs> you control it with a block, a remote control block of cheese. <gasps> oh, that's fantastic. I don't know how this thing works exactly, but it oh, supposedly it literally just crawls around all over your shirt. I have no idea how that would work, <laughs> but that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm so for I, it. We've got to get our hands on one of those mm. as soon as they come out. Yes. Right. Okay, you ready for a mini segment? Mini take. Let's mini do it. Take. Yes. Oh gosh, easy. Don't knock down Mando Monopoly. Okay, here we go. What's All the right. Question? Who's the it from? The question is. Oh. Okay. This is really, really for for you more than me. Okay. This is from it's our a bathroom question. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> this is from our friend Johanna Carruthers. Oh, okay. Uh, your favorite Mickey or Minnie ears? Oh gosh, okay. My favorite Mickey or Minnie ears. Um, my, so for the record, I rate Mickey or Minnie ears based on comfort and lack of bedazzledness. So I don't like massive bows, tons of flowers, and things of that nature. It's just not me. Um, but comfort rates even higher. So, my number one favorite set of Mickey and Minnie ears are my pizza ears from the Italy Pavilion in Epcot. Okay. They lack all bedazzlement, a very tiny gingham bow that is very reasonable, and they are super comfortable. You can wear them all day, and you don't even know they're there. All right. Well, that's all. That all seems fair. Yes. That all seems fair. That's fair. I think my favorite set of ears, on, I don't actually have ears. I've got my mm-hmm. one uh, hat, Mouse that Club hat that has ears, and I, mm-hmm. I love it. I've actually... Worn it throughout an entire day at the park multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, but on you, I think my favorite ears are the 
actual mini mouse ears with the hat and the flower that comes out. I thought you were gonna say sorcerer Mickey. No. Because you love to take oh, pictures I, of now, the back of my yeah, head. Yeah, the, when the I'm little one. Those. That's probably my second favorite one. Yeah. Take all kinds of pictures of me when, I I, when I'm <laughs> like walk in front of me five more five more feet. I just need stop. Right, stop okay, right stop, there. Right stop there. now. <laughs> I'll take a picture. You can walk now. You do that all the time. <laughs> Wearing those ears. Well, but I think the ones I like the most though are yeah are the Minnie Mouse ears. Yeah, pizza all, right. all day for me. Tomorrowland. Here we mm-hmm. go. Okay, so uh, releasing to Disney Plus on June the eighteenth. So it's really right around the corner. Okay. Is Disney Pixar's Luca. Yes. Okay. I'm so excited about Luca. So what all do you know about Luca? I know he turns into a mermaid when he hits the water. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So close, maybe. A merman? Is that a thing? We are he's actually a sea monster. Oh, okay. Yes, he's a sea monster. Okay. Uh, his name is Luca Puguro. Is he from Greece? He's from Italy. Italy, okay. We assume, right? Okay. He's voiced by Jacob Tremblay, okay. who uh, is a 14 year old actor who made his debut uh, as, I'm assuming, one of the Smurfs in Smurf 2. Okay. And is he, he Italian? Uh, I think he's Canadian, actually. Um, there, is he there a are sea some, monster? He is. A, Does he identify as a sea monster? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I just want to make he, sure they cast it properly. Okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> Um, and, uh, he made his breakout in the movie Room, was a dark drama uh, movie. So, and, uh, let's see, it also, um, he has a fateful encounter with Alberto Scorfano, who's voiced by Jack Dylan Grazer. He played, uh, Freddie Freeman in Shazam and was in both of the It movies that recently were released. Okay. Um. Also creepy. (laughs) A little bit. (laughs) Uh, so anyway, so here's here's the s- summary okay, preview plot, plot of summary. plot summary. Yeah, okay. Luca is a sea monster, super shy, super timid. Mm-hmm. Okay, lived a pretty sheltered life. Through happenstance, one day he runs across Alberto, okay. also a sea monster. Mm-hmm. Alberto is everything Luca's not. He's a free spirit. He's uh, he's he's not scared of anything. He's sort of brash and talks a lot, knows everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he's everything that Luca wants to be. Okay. Or at least he thinks he wants to be. Mm-hmm. Alberto invites Luca to explore life on land. Um, and takes a little bit of convincing, obviously, but uh, he, he gets him to do it. And Luca and Alberto take these little ventures up to land. And when they do, they turn into humans. Okay. And there's a there's a whole thing about how they they transform themselves into humans from the inside, comes okay. from the heart, okay. right? Um, uh, and they can stay that way as long as they don't get wet. So, oh, okay. you remember Splash? The so movie can't st- take a bath. I do remember Splash. I also loved Splash. That was the whole, the whole thing. There was that was a she fan couldn't of get wet. If she right. got wet while she was on land, she would turn back into a mermaid. Right. Right. Okay. So of of course, uh, so they they truly bond uh, Alberto and Luca over their love of Vespas. <laughs> Oh, how cute. While they're on land. <laughs> Vespas <laughs> which, are great. Which is totally super <laughs> Italian. And uh, and so they love it so much, they even sort of build one um, themselves back at home and imagine it like if they could ride around the countryside on the Vespa oh, that they cute. built. Well, Luca's mom finds out that he's doing this, and she's just not for that at all. Not for him Going on mm-hmm. land and being a human. No, yeah. no, no, no. Daniela is her name, played by Maya Rudolph. Okay. Um, oh, I love Maya you Rudolph. You love Maya Rudolph, yes. Um, and she says that the world is a very dangerous place and that she will send him to the bottom of the ocean to keep him safe if she has to. Oh well, she threatens to send him to his weird uncle. And Luca's like, nah, I'm not having that. He's now super bold, right? He's Or he's... Right. For Luca, he's super bold. Right. So he decides and convinces Alberto to go with him back to land, and they venture farther into town than they've ever ventured before. Okay. And it's interesting because the townsfolk for generations have been afraid of sea monsters. Okay. Okay. But while there, they, they're just... 
they're floored by things like the language that's spoken. They are floored by gelato. Naturally, I can, I can I understand totally that. Them on that. <laughs> right. So they don't speak Italian. Uh, I, you know, I guess not. I, okay. you know, I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. I just know that they say they're they're they're, they're floored by they're the floored language. by the language right. the way these people speak. Um, they also run into a little girl who is very adventurous. Her name is Julia. Ju- Julia. Julia. Okay. And uh, she is very adventurous, not timid, very much in your face. Right. And the three of them bond and have an adventure. Is my understanding. Mm. Okay. So, um, how did this story came to be? Uh, the director, Enrico Casarosa. Okay. He spent his formative years in uh, the uh, in having idyllic summers in Northwest Italy. And there, he had a best friend that he met when he was 12 named Alberto. Aww. Alberto was very outgoing, very not timid. And totally, like, influenced Enrico Casaro, Casarosa mm-hmm. to take risks and and be bolder. Right. And uh, he actually says here that um, Alberto got me out of my comfort zone. He pushed me off so many cliffs, metaphor- metaphorical and not. <laughs> <laughs> he says he inspired him to take risks later in life. Uh, that led to his, the career he has today. I might not be here right now had I not learned to chase my dreams from him. Oh, Isn't that great? That's fantastic. I love how he honored him with naming the character Alberto. Yeah. Um, the movie's producer, Andre Warren, adds, the themes in the film around friendship are so beautiful, especially with how differences can bridge things and can make us better. Love it. Come on. Love it. You know, There's a lot to be made of the transformation from sea monster to, uh, to human. Uh, the the animators originally were going to like put them in like a mechanical human suit of some kind, Ooh. but they decided no no this has to come from within because everything that happens has requires right. courage from within. Okay. But it allowed them to do things as animators transitioning these sea monsters into humans that they've yeah. never done before. They literally control every scale on these animals' bodies. Wow. Individually through the animation. Oh, that's insane. So it's uh it's. They're like, they literally said, this is something we've never been able to do before. This is not a musical. I don't get the impression that it is. Okay. And, you know, most Pixar's are not. Mm-hmm. Although this is Disney and Pixar right. collaboration. But anyway, um, so let's see here. Other cast members include uh, Marco Baricelli as Massimo, Julia's dad. Okay. Uh, Jim Gaffigan as Lorenzo, Luca's dad. Okay. Sandy Martin as Grandma Paguro. It's always that grandma in there. I'm glad to hear that Luke has got a mom and a dad. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Good that's for, a good, good for him. Point. Good <laughs> point. 1,200 kids auditioned for the voice roles of Luca, Alberto, and Julia. Wow. 1,200 kids. They said, when it came to casting, we wanted acting skills, of course, but we also wanted actors who would be willing to play, to improvise, to make mistakes, and to have fun. We really wanted to capture the nature of kids, which isn't overly polished. The, huh. yep, the setting takes place in um, the Italian Riviera. And this also was a challenge for the animators because Enrico Casarosa did not want overly realistic images. He okay. wanted this entire thing to look like a storybook. Aww. Pixar is like, I want, you know, I want um, the, the hero from The Incredibles to fall into the ocean it looks like real water she's in right, yeah. and like she's soaked with water. That's not the look he wanted. With with where they would normally use 50 strokes, he wanted 3 strokes. Right. Right? Right. These characters are not realistic looking necessarily. Right. They're really cute though. They're really cute. Oh, they're very cute. storybooky. Yes, you're right. Yeah, and, that's uh, a great way to describe them. Yeah, and uh so it's like Luca is an observer of the world. He takes it all in. So he's got a small chin and big eyes. You know, slumpy shoulders, uh-huh. whereas Alberto and Julia are much more bombastic and in your face. And oh. so they've got strong chins and big mouths, and they're always sort of leaning forward on the page. Oh, right? that's cute. Yeah. So uh, he asked them to do things that, that Pixar had never done before. He was much more involved with every frame of the, of the that's animation. Awesome. 
And they were like, we're not used to this. We're used to you tell us this world you want us to create and we make it look real. Instead, he wanted us to create a storybook for the right. pay, for the for the right. film, which is great. Oh, that's fun. Um, uh, most of it was done during pandemic, which right. obviously creates its own challenges. And everyone is super excited for the launch. Uh, quotes here uh, from the director: "I'm just excited for everyone to be able to meet this trio, to see their chemistry, and be taken on an emotional ride." He hopes the film. <laughs> he says. Uh, he hopes the film uh, tells makes people want to reach out to their childhood friends. Just call them up and say, hey, that was amazing when we were growing up together, wasn't it? Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's really good. When did you say that so, launches again? June 18th. Just okay. a couple of weeks, really. June 18th. About three weeks, I guess. On Disney Plus. On Disney Plus, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So look out for Luca. That's awesome, yes. I've seen some previews, and I'm very excited about that. All right. Well, showcase, you ready? Yep. I'm on brand this week. Food. Food. We're going to go to Breakfast at the Wave. Good call. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the Wave, that's because it is a very underrated. I think so. uh, Very underrated dining experience. It's at the Contemporary Resort. And so I think it's one of those things where, like, if you're staying at the Contemporary, you think about eating there. If you're not staying at the Contemporary, you sort of have to think about how to get there and then out to the parks. Sure. And so it's like this extra step. But I just want to say, I don't know if we would have ever gone there if it weren't mentioned by a friend. A friend recommended it to us. Um, And specifically, she recommended two menu items, which we're going to get into in a little bit here. Uh, But I am so glad we went. (laughs) Me too. So glad we went. Um (laughs) So, all first of all, let me just say, all breakfast buffets at Disney are not created equal. Um, the Wave has both a buffet and a menu that you can order off of. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they're doing the buffet right now, I will say, because of COVID. Sure. I will also say they are closed right now for refurb. Okay. Um, for the 50th anniversary, they're going to reopen on July the 15th. Okay. And I will tell you, they needed the refurb. It this is. is straight out of 1980s. The decor was very, very outdated. Um, and I think, you know, if you walked by, you might, from the outside, it looks like an expensive restaurant because of the entrance. Yeah, the entrance is is very modern and looks very high end. And the dinner, by the way, dinner is fairly expensive. Okay. Um, but when you get inside the restaurant, it doesn't match that mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. The inside does not match that what you thought you were going to see on the yeah, outside. And it's, it's windowless. And it's just kind of, you feel like you're almost eating in a basement. Yeah. When you eat the food, you don't care because the food's amazing. Yeah. But that's the feel. So it needed the update. It did. So I'm thrilled it's getting an update. And I want to tell you guys about some of the food this week so that you don't miss it on your next yeah. trip to Disney. There this is an easy one to sleep on. For sure. Because you've never heard about it. Um, but you need to go here. So like I mentioned, all breakfasts are not created equal. All breakfast buffets at Disney are not created equal. So for example, if you go to Ask or Shush, at uh, Norway, <laughs> did I say that wrong? Uh, no, not no. Okay, no. if you go to Askershus at Norway, then you'll see more of a European type breakfast. That's true, right? A lot of cold cuts and things of that nature. If you go to Tusker House, Animal Kingdom, you're going to get that amazing bread that we talked about yep. the other week. Yep. So breakfast buffets have signature items. Mm-hmm. And the Wave has some signature breakfast items you don't want to miss. True. So, first of all, uh, the breakfast menu is 15 to $35, depending on what you get. Um, and the buffet is about 22 That's what it was in 2019. You know, you never know with the refurb what they're going to come back with. Sure. But here's how Disney describes it on their website. Surround yourself in casual elegance at this feel-good eatery. Dine on new American cuisine inspired by passion for locally and regionally sourced ingredients accompanied by new world wines and tasty craft beers. I'm assuming they're talking about dinner here. Start your day with a classic a la carte American breakfast such as Eggs Benedict or dive into our signature sweet potato pancakes served Mm. with pecan honey butter and a side of sausage or bacon. Mm. At lunch, opt for robust sandwiches, our signature burgers, or an assortment of fresh salads. Dinner offers such distinctive dishes as grilled beef tenderloin and seared potato gnocchi. I would love to have their seared potato gnocchi. Then cap off your meal with a creme brulee and a divine dessert selection. So, we're going to focus on breakfast. Yeah, because that's what we ate there. That's what we ate there, and that's what I think is the most overlooked at the wave. 
I don't think people consider the wave for breakfast unless they're staying at the contemporary. Sure. So don't sleep on the wave at breakfast. Here is here's what you're gonna get. Well, one other another, especially considering that Chef Mickey's is right upstairs. Yeah, Chef Mickey's is right that's, upstairs. That's what gets yes. all the attention at the contemporary for breakfast. Yes. So that's what I will say is the wave. It's really probably for people who are not looking for a character breakfast experience mm, and sure. maybe who want a quieter breakfast. That's a good point. Um, there was a family in there that had, you know, tons of children across from us. Um, and they did the buffet, I think, so that they could get in and out really quickly. They did get in and out really fast. And man, did they get in and they out. Were- I was... <laughs> I was blown away, but what, you know, whatever, that's not what we're talking about. So let me go through the menu. Okay. So first of all, entrees, you've got an amazing selection of eggs, breakfast, potatoes, bacon, sausage, hollandaise, grits, waffles, fruits, all mixed together in an assortment of entrees, right? Mm -hmm. Those are your traditional offerings. Here are your signature offerings. One, the wave signature sweet potato pancakes. Mm -hmm. Just mention them. Serve with that pecan honey butter and your Mm. choice of bacon, pork, sausage, or chicken sausage. Those are $14. They're also available on the buffet. Mm. Um, Avocado toast. This is plant-based, and it is to die for, y'all. I love this avocado toast. Avocado, toasted multigrain bread, and caramelized onion jam. This is $12. (laughs) It is gorgeous. It looks like it was done by an amazing chef at a really top-end restaurant. You know, not that I'm saying the wave's not either of those, but it's $12. So what you get for $12 just blows your mind from a visual perspective. Yeah, it was beautiful. And the Floridian Eggs Benedict. This is two poached eggs, a crab cake with hollandaise Mm. atop toasted English muffins served with breakfast potatoes. Mm. Now, they have kids' options, too, so I'm not even going to go through those. They're traditional. Um. The other thing that the wave is known for are their wake up calls. Oh, right. This what they that's what they're titled. So number one, you got the Bay Lake Bloody Mary. Oh, Saint Augustine Florida Cane Vodka and Bloody Mary mix, garnished with chorizo, cheddar, and olives. What I know, I know. But here you go, people. This is why people go to the wave, the avocado toast, and the bottomless mimosa. <laughs> That's that's true. You actually talked about that for like a month before we ever even got there. And then it totally lived up to your expectations. I'm going to screw this pronunciation up. Uh, Freynet Blanc de Blanc's Brute Sparkling Wine. <laughs> Sorry, Freynet. That's not how it's said. And orange juice. This is $19 for the bottomless version or $12 for one. Yeah. Why would you get? Why would you get just one? Not when it's seven bucks more to have all you want. All you want, man. To just stumble right out of the wave. Yes, the <laughs> refillable mimosa. They also have the seasonal spiked latte. And this is the wave's signature Joffrey's coffee. I've already done a special on Joffrey's. <laughs> blend of organic coffee and spirits with flavors influenced by the season. So, like, you might have, you know, an autumnal seasonal spiked latte or a summer one or a winter sure. one or what have you. Seasonal sangria, red wine, and fresh seasonal fruit. So they've got four wake-up calls that I think are all very worthy. Sure. But if you don't go to the wave and get that avocado toast and the bottomless mimosa, I just don't know if we can be friends. (laughs) They also have some non-alcoholic beverages, (laughs) smoothies, tea, juice, milk, etc. And then here's a cool one. Alto Mayo Protected Forest Cafe Forest coffee, roasted by Joffrey's coffee. This serves too. So we've seen this before at Epcot. Disney supports Conservation International's Alto Mayo Protected Forest Project in Peru, which promotes sustainable yeah. coffee growing and economic growth. Yeah, that's awesome. Isn't that fantastic? That. So they're going to brew you a little small pot for two, or, I mean, it serves two. What does that mean? What does that mean? Two it cups, two eight cups, cups four cups. Get four. <laughs> I'm not sure how that breaks down. But in any case, that's non-alcoholic. It supports Conservation International's great. mission in Peru, which we're totally for. They also have allergy-friendly appetizers. They've got gluten-free muffins and things of that nature. I looked at some of the stuff on the buffet, and they've got, like, egg white frittatas. Yes. Um, They also, they have the sweet potato pancakes on Mm -hmm. the buffet. They sure do. Um, They do not have an omelet station there, but you can build your own omelet on the menu. But if you pay for the buffet, just tell your server what you want, and they'll get you an omelet from the back. Yeah, that's right. 
right? So even though there's not a build your own omelet station, if you want an omelet and you get the buffet, tell the server and get yourself the yeah. omelet. Because right? they'll, they'll hook you up that way. They'll hook you up that way. Um, but again, don't sleep on the wave. No, absolutely not. It's uh, I had the sweet potato pancakes along with a whole bunch of other stuff. I specifically remember that their grits there. If you're from the South and you love your grits, they were they were next level. Grits matter. They do uh, to me in any case. They also had like an apple spiced quinoa. Yeah, on the oh, buffet. That's right. Yes, yeah. I looked at some pictures online and I thought, now that I would enjoy. Yeah, the apple spiced I just quinoa. I remember the sweet potato pancakes with the pecan butter syrup and the chicken sausage that they have was just next level. Yeah. Yeah, we were really blown away by the food. Again, mm-hmm. it looks like a very unassuming restaurant. Yep. I'm so excited that it's getting a refurb. Yep. Don't it, sleep it on it. It deserves it. It deserves it. It yep. deserves it. Don't sleep on it. And if you go, or not if, when you go, yeah. get those bottomless mimosas for $19. Seriously. And make that trip. What to, a way to start your Because we know what you're doing. We you're going you're there doing. before you go to the Magic Kingdom. Mm. So... Do the Magic Kingdom right and Preach go it. with just a, yes. a small champagne-induced buzz. <laughs> <laughs> you need the bottomless mimosas. And, you know, I think the way to go is to um, one person order the avocado toast and the other get those pecan pancakes. And, and then you, you can weird. split. Or not. <laughs> But again, all breakfasts are not created equal, and they do have signature items at the way. So they don't do. sleep on it. Yep, absolutely. Get there. Yeah. Okay, folks, that is it for this week's show. You know what to do now. Go out to your favorite um, platform for downloading podcasts and subscribe to ours. That way you don't have to worry about going out there each week and downloading. It'll download automatically. Um Yes. It, and if you want more, more thing, you just there. totally blanked there. And I'm supposed to be saying SCF, ADP.com. Sorry. That's S for Super, C for Cali, F for Fragilistic, A for Awesome, D for Disney, P for Podcast. Are we going to have a bonus episode this week, honey? Yes, we are. We're going to have a bonus episode. <laughs> it's my job to put it together. And I'm just, I'm, you're I'm doing terrible. It. You're killing it. No, you're not. You're killing it. Keep an eye out for that. <laughs> Hold me accountable. You can uh, also follow us on all the other socials at SCFADP, or you can go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. You're really going to want to do that now. Supercalifragilistic Awesome Disney Podcast is the name of that channel. The more the merrier. Yes. And with that, we hope to see see you you real soon. soon.